the heritage of faith. It's Wednesday Miracle Night. <laughs> well, welcome. Everybody stand to your feet. Fist pump about 17 people. Tell them Jesus is Lord. Welcome all of you joining online with us tonight. Here's a fist pump for you. Jesus is Lord. He's Lord of this earth. He's Lord of our lives. He's Lord of this church. Amen. Pastor Justin and Ed are on a, a getaway this week, and so we want to pray for them. And this coming Sunday is going to be these next three Sundays, right? We've got Pastor Justin at 9, Dr. Savell at 11. The next Sunday we got Ms. Savell at 9, Dr. Savell at 11. The next Sunday we got uh, Pastor Carla for both services. And there's special messages that are going to be preached. So you don't want to miss that. And you want to drag somebody in here with you or just bring them, whatever, either way. However you can get them here. The Bible says compel them to come in. So let's pray for pastors before we get started tonight. Father, we just lift up Pastor Justin and Annette to you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that they're in a place of peace right now. You're guarding their minds with peace, their hearts with peace. You're speaking to them, Lord, about the next step, the vision for this church and the next step for that. And we thank you that angels are ministering to them, keeping them safe, surrounding them, protecting them. And we thank you for it. And now, Father, for this service tonight, we give this to you tonight. We thank you, Lord, that Brother Joseph is anointed to bring your word tonight. We draw on that anointing tonight, Lord, and we just worship you. We just worship you, God. You are a mighty God, and we honor you tonight. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy and your grace, your love the blood that you shed, Jesus. Lord, we just pause right now and put away all the distractions of the day, of the week, of the month, of this year. <laughs> oh, Lord, we just put our eyes on you. In Jesus' name. Come on, worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Splendor of the king. Splendor of the king. That's it. Clothed. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself, he wraps. Darkness tried to hide it. Tremble at his voice, tremble. Trembles at his voice. Come on, how great, how great. Do you really believe that? Sing with me. How great is our God? Oh, we'll see. How great the God. Woo! Age to age he stands. I'm as in his Sing like you in the shower. The God had three.
you open your mouth and say something to me. All day long, you have been great, Jesus. God, you deserve all the glory and all the honor. Woo! That's it. Come on in. Come on in the throne room. Woo! Hallelujah. He inhabits the praises of his people. He inhabits your praise.
God and I'm God alone. There is no one. There is. He has no equal. He has no rival. There is no one. No one. No one. There is no. Jesus, there is no one. There is. Come on, keep on singing that. Come on. The Holy Spirit is here. Monday to Sunday, there is no one. There is no one. There is, there is no one. No one. Nowhere. There is. Sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet Heavenly Dove. worship him right there, right there. There is an anointing right there in your worship. operating on hearts right now. Amen. There's a stillness in this room. Woo. God, we give you glory and honor and praise. Glory, 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 Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. A sweet presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you so much for your love and your light, your fountain of life. You teach us light, Lord. You teach us how to live in your light, Lord. We receive this, Lord. We receive this so much. We thank you so much in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Folks, it was a Wednesday. It was about eight years ago. I, I got out of the military in 2012, and I was confronted with this legal case. And I came early on a Wednesday morning and just, just came into the sanctuary and just started singing to the Lord. And Pastor Justin was here and he prayed over me. And I just started praising the Lord. And somewhere in that praise, that burden just lifted. Isn't that what Jesus said? Come to me because, you know, I have an easy yoke. My burden is so light. You know, my yoke is easy. I'm one in the Father. He's one in me. Hallelujah. He said that the Father knows the Son, and the Son knows the Father. It was intimate. And he said, now I'm going to share it with you. I want to share it with you. Be gentle. Be meek. Come to me, because I'm gentle and meek. And he says, if you've got any problems, any burdens, just come to me. So I came, and I started worshiping the Lord. 
and it just left, and the peace and the presence of the Lord came over me, and the Holy Spirit started talking to me, and he started telling me what to do, and I stayed home that night, and he showed me everything to say, everything to put down, and I won that legal case. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Oh, thank you, Lord. And it was just being in the sweet presence of the Lord, just being in his presence. We thank you so much for it, Jesus. Oh, if we could just do this day to day in our workplace, just stop for a second. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God bless you. Go ahead and please be seated. Thank you, Joseph. Deborah, thank you. What an honor and a privilege it is, Deborah, to, to worship and minister to the Lord with you. She goes with me uh, into the juvenile centers, you know, into the detention centers, and she starts singing to the kids. And the presence of God just comes down on those children. And those teenagers just sit there, and all of a sudden, that sweet presence of the Lord just comes right in. It is just one of the most wonderful things. What a joy and a privilege, what an honor and a privilege it is to be here tonight, to share with you, to fellowship with you, to join arm in arm with you, to release the Holy Spirit, you know, with you, and allow the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. And uh, as I was praying, and as I was spending time with the Holy Spirit, um, there were about three things he wanted me to share with you before I get into my message as I was praying. And uh, the Lord was just so wonderful when he said it. You know, he, he said this, just tell the people in the, the church tonight that you're being lied to when you're watching TV shows, the media, you know, when you, even, even the sitcoms, things like that, you know. He was telling me, just be very careful with what you're listening to. Right. And then he took me to the scripture in Matthew, you know, Matthew chapter 12. And you, you start going over that. And he talks about how a, there was a generation of vipers. And what's in the viper's mouth? Fangs. And what is, what's in there? Poison. And he was saying, how can you being evil know how to say good, you know, do good things? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Right. And so he says, a good treasure, a good person, that treasure will bring out good, right? But an evil will bring out evil, no matter how it's disguised, no matter how it comes out, right? And then he starts talking about words being idle, idle words, right? The, the dangers of speaking idle words, you know, getting caught up in that, getting caught up, letting those seeds be planted and then saying those things. So just be careful while you're watching. And if you're sensing, you know, if you're in an environment like that, man, just rebuke it in the name of Jesus, just go over it with the Holy Spirit, and then just speak the words of life coming out over you. And the other thing he said was, is I'm going to give you the ability to see and to move in the dark. Oh, man. We're in such a vital moment. As Pastor Phil was praying with us back there, you know, this era of time, this moment of time, this sliver of time that we're in, it's so vital for us to remember who we are in Christ Jesus. Remember who you are in Christ Jesus, who you're supposed to be. And uh, the Lord is going to start showing you things because things are accelerating. Darkness is accelerating, folks. It's accelerating. We're not in the times where you see recovery and then everybody just kind of groups back up and things start going back to normal. We're seeing things accelerating at a rapid pace. And right now, you and I are poised in position right now to just be the answer for so many things that are out there. So be careful. And then I heard him say this, turn your seed inward. This is good ground right here. If you start sowing in here, you're, it, this is good ground. I mean, the Holy Spirit told me this. This is good ground. So when you bring your seed here and you release it, and, and he reminded me also of the book of Acts in the fourth chapter, when everyone started praying for one another, and as they began to pray for one another, and as they went from house to house, and as they began to break bread, the Lord put it on their hearts to begin sowing into each other. I've been sowing into people, folks, and people have been sowing back into me. So um, I'm telling you, where's Patty and Jim? Those rascals right there, hallelujah. I mean, they don't know it, but, but, but I've been sowing, right? And the Lord put it on their heart to sow into me. They don't know it. They don't know I've been sowing, right? But the Lord put it on their heart, right? And that's what I love about the Lord. And that's what I love about this. When you start praying for one another and uh, the Holy Spirit starts to tell you to start sowing into one another. So just spend more time with the Lord also. That was the other thing. I mean, we, Pastor Carla on Monday when we were talking about that with prayer, how intimate prayer works. And um, I just remember in Matthew 26 where Jesus is getting ready to go you know, to die on the cross, right? And uh, he, man, the Holy Spirit just falls on him. He just falls on his knees and begins to intercede and begins to pray. And he's asking 
you know, the disciples to help him pray. Well, man, if the Lord's kicking you at three or four in the morning to get up and pray, please get up and pray because the spirit is willing, right? But the flesh is weak. We don't want to fall into temptation, especially in today's day. So remember to stay intimate with the Lord. Hallelujah. Well thanks, well, thanks for letting me say that. Hallelujah. Thank you, folks, because uh, it was just something you wanted me to say. And tonight what I'd like to say and talk about is go work today in my vineyard. Go and work today in my vineyard. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 13. Hallelujah. We're going to the word of God. And Father, I thank you for your word because your words are spirit and they are life. Jesus, this is going to be your words that we're going to speak tonight and we're going to receive them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, it's going to move, it's going to penetrate, and it's going to flow. So we receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 13. Now I'm in the King James Version, verse 24. And Jesus gives a parable. I love parables. Parables are treasures that are hidden for us, right? The world, the devil can't understand them. He can't receive them. Parables are for us. They're for us to dig and unload and to, re- and, and to receive from them, right? And so he says this parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in the field. Well, the Garden of Eden, right? He came, he sowed in this earth, he created this wonderful place for us, wonderful life, right? But while men slept, now I want you to key in on this in verse 25. While men slept, the guardians, you and I, while men slept, right? His enemy comes in and he sows tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and it brought forth fruit, there appeared the tares also. So just imagine a garden. You've got stuff growing in it. And all of a sudden, hey, where'd all these thorns come from? Where'd all these thistles come from? Now remember Pastor Justin when he was talking about being complacent and he went to Proverbs and he used that one uh, thing that Solomon had received from the Lord when he saw that wall that was broken down in that field and, and all of a sudden the thorns and the thistles started coming up and just a little bit of lackadaisical attitude, just a little bit of slipping here and there, and all of a sudden it comes in, right? Well, that's what's happened here. So in verse 27, the servants of the household, they come and they say unto him, Sir, uh, didn't we plant good seed in the field? Where'd all these tares come from, right? So he examines it, he's looking at it, and he says, well, an enemy has done this. In verse 28, The servant said unto him, well, then will you go ahead and gather them up? And in verse 29, he says, no, lest while you gather up the tares, you're going to root up also the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, then I'll say to the reapers, go gather together first the tares. We'll bind them up in the bundles. We'll burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Folks, I started crying when I read that. I just started crying when I read that because if, if, you know, there's a lot of people out there that use the word of God to condemn, right? They start judging the world. They start going out being the Holy Ghost cop, and they just start arresting everybody, and they just start screaming the word at them, right? And just start judging them, start using the word as a weapon, start showing it as a mirror to show them just how bad they are and all this, you know? And, um, man, I'm telling you, if the Lord would have judged me before I got born again, that wheat would have been pulled up. I'd have been gone. I'd have been out here. I'd be in hell right now, right? So what is the Lord doing? He's waiting until an appointed time, right? How many times when you go out and you evangelize, people say, well, if there's a God in the world, why are these bad things all happening? Well, there it is. Jesus is talking about it right there. Because if he pulls up and does judgment now, right? Because it's a choice, right? If he does it now, right, what's going to happen? You're going to lose the good wheat, right, along with the tares. I would rather be patient and wait, right, is what the Lord is saying. Let it grow. Let it grow up. Let those roots get down in there, you know. Let them get born again, right? And then we can do the harvest at the end. Oh, thank you, Lord, so much for that. So remember, as we're going out and we're working into the vineyard, right, and we're going out and we're doing God's work, remember that. Hey, remember where you came from, right? Start praying for them, right? Deposit that seed in them. And just remember that verse right there. What I'd like to do now is go to Mark chapter 16. Let's go to Mark 16. And you'll see this pattern that I'm going here. Mark chapter 16. Where's my my military guys in here? Got a lot of military guys in here. All right. It's called the Great Commission. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he says unto them, this is Jesus speaking, you go, remember Uncle Sam? 
It's got a little finger pointing. I want you, right? You go, okay? So this is an offense, not a defense, right? We're on the offense. The devil's on the defense. The score is 800 bazillion to nothing, and the devil's losing, right? It's the ninth inning. He's coming up the bat, and we're smoking those fastballs right by him, and he's, here, devil, hit this one. Woo! And it's going right past him, and he's just watching that thing go by. We go. We're on the offensive, right? So go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news. The gospel is the good news. Jesus has come. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. Sick man, you don't have to be sick anymore. Poor man, you don't have to be poor anymore. Blind man, you don't have to be blind anymore. It ain't me that's going to do it. It's Jesus that deserves the glory. We just sang that, right? He's the one who's going to do it. All I'm going to do is open my mouth and share the gospel. Hallelujah. They can receive it or they don't have to receive it, right? But I'm going to share it, man. Oh, am I going to share it, right? To every creature. He that believes... It's going to be baptized. Ooh, here comes the Holy Ghost, man. Oh, man, that bubble of life is going to flow up from the inside of them. They're going to be baptized. I tell you what, a lot of guys are going to be born in the Holy Spirit. They're going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, too. Ooh, man. We got an event coming up in November, right? We're going out to Larry Joe Wright's ministry. And uh, it's on a Saturday. You'll see it on the website. And about five years ago, we took a group of guys and went there. And uh, we went out there and started evangelizing. And when I finished evangelizing, we were done. It was about two or three hours we were out there. People were all standing in their line, tons of salvations, people getting born again left and right. And I'm getting ready to go, and the Holy Spirit says, you see that fellow sitting over there, standing there in the corner? I said, yeah. He says, I want to go baptize him in the Holy Ghost. Now, I didn't know that he had grown up Catholic. I didn't know that he had just gotten born again a week earlier. And I didn't know he was asking the Lord, what's this thing about being called born in the Holy, you know, being baptized in the Holy Ghost? I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I didn't know that, right? So I go up and start talking to him. Well, the guy speaks Spanish, right? So I get my Spanish. There was a Spanish guy who could speak with me, and he comes up and starts talking to him. Hey, the Holy Spirit just fell on this guy. His eyes got as big as saucers. I said, tell him that's the Holy Spirit. And that guy received the Holy Spirit right then and there. I mean, he was willing. He was believing. I mean, what did I do? All I did was just listen to the Holy Spirit, right? All I did was just go out and preach the gospel. And then I just sitting there and the Lord just said, go tell him. And so I told him he received it, wanted it, and got it, right? So we're going to see this, right? Those that will be saved, but those that believe not will be damned. Well, there it is. It's right there. It's that simple. You choose to believe, right? It says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Man, I'm looking forward to see what the Holy Spirit's going to do through this body of wonderful believers here. I'm just, oh, man, I'm waiting to hear the testimonies. We're going to hear them. You're going to be coming back from your workplace. You're going to be going out. You're going to be doing something somewhere. And the Lord's going to start talking to you. And you're going to be saying, like, what, Lord? I'm in, the, I'm in a meeting one time at Diego Garcia with my general. My commanding general is in there. And the Lord starts talking to me, telling me he wants to do something. I'm like, well, I can't do that right now. And the Lord's like, excuse me. So later on, I went to, I didn't know the guy was searching the Lord. I didn't know he was after some things from heaven, right? But then you start praying with him, and you find these things out, you know? I mean, he's going to start talking to you at the funnest times, at the neatest places, And when he does, just yield to him. Just yield to him. Hey, this is what this is all about, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This is the Great Commission. Everybody has been given this. Uh, I did two years in the Army. The rest was in the Air Force. I always like to tell everybody, they feed you better in the Air Force. That's why I I went in the Air Force. (laughs) So I had a good time in the Army, but they played guns a lot. And, you know, they just, they always like to eat, you know, all this different kinds of food. And it's like, eh. So I went in the Air Force. And, um, but when I was in the army, they taught me one thing that you're not relieved of your post until you are properly relieved of command. And then the other thing they taught me was, is, is you're a soldier first. I don't care if you're a flyer, if you're a cook, I don't care what you're doing. You're a soldier first. So if you have to, you're going to put the helmet on, you're going to dig the foxhole, you're going to get your rifle and you're going to go in and you're going to fight. And that's exactly what this great commission is. I don't care where you are or what the Lord's called you to do in life. Your, your number one job is to preach the gospel and to, to be an example for the Lord. That's your number one job. So I'm reading this. Here I am in the Air Force. At that time, I was a captain. I got born again. All right, here we go. So I start preaching Jesus in the workplace. I start sending Jesus everywhere, you know. I had a group commander, one of my colonels. She went on to be a general and a wonderful woman of uh, the Lord. I found out she was a Christian later. And uh, she's like, uh, Brother Joseph, 
we know you love the Lord, but you can't keep sending these emails to everybody about Jesus and having all these quotes on here, you know. This is a DOD computer and all this. And I said, ma'am, I can't change who I am, you know. And uh, so I got creative with the Lord, and I started putting it in the paragraphs up above instead of on the bottom, you know. So, but, I mean, that's what you do when you get born again. You just start talking Jesus to everybody. You just live Jesus, eat Jesus, sleep Jesus. Oh, and I had guys that would start cussing and swearing. Oh, yeah. Start taking the name of the Lord in vain and start doing all these things. So I just start saying the word and just start preaching Jesus, right? Oh, you're proselytizing. You can't proselytize in here. I said, hey, look, if you're going to curse the name of my God, I'm definitely going to bless his name, you know? And so I would start going around, and, and they put me in this office with this one senior NCO, and this guy, I didn't know his wife got born again, and she was praying for him to get born again, right? I mean, it was, it was the Lord's name in vain coming out every other second, you know? And I'm in this office with this guy, and he knows I'm a Christian, and he's just doing it and laughing and laughing. So I go home and I pray and I say, all right, Lord, what am I going to do about this? And the Lord says, every time he says it, I just want you to say under your mouth, you're going to get radically saved. <laughs> and so you're going to get radically saved. And so he start cussing and saying the name of the Lord in vain. And I look at him, you're going to get radically saved. Well, do you know, I, I had gotten orders to go uh, at that time to another location I had come back because my wife was still behind. She had stayed back because I went to Diego Garcia for a year, so they still kept her there. So when I came back, I went back just to visit the place. And he's got the biggest smile on his face. He says, you're not going to guess what happened while you were gone. I got born again. I mean, he got born again. I mean, hallelujah. So, I mean, I, I began to realize that the Lord will call you to do something. But while you're doing it, you're actually called to be a minister of the gospel. So I started having fun with this. And so I said, all right, Lord, then send me overseas. So in my profession, it's hard to go overseas when you're a missile and you're working with nuclear missiles. You know, that's very hard to go overseas in that profession. But I got to go to Diego Garcia and evangelize to everybody that was on the island. I got to go to England for three years, and I got to evangelize to everybody that was over there. And then I got to go to the Pentagon, and we started evangelizing over there. So I just started using every assignment I had as a mission from God to just go out and start evangelizing on the weekends and during the weekdays. So, um, and uh, things start happening in the workplace. Yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, these are the things that the Lord does. Will you go work in my vineyard? Will you go with me? And uh, I'd like to go to Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And you want to know what the funnest thing about it was? I'm clueless every time I go to evangelize with somebody, clueless as to what I was going to say, clueless as to what I was going to do. I just smile and say, hey, do you know God loves you? He's got a wonderful plan for your life. Just start telling them about the love of Jesus. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, this peace like we had when we were worshiping the Lord just comes on you. And all of a sudden, all the intimidation that tries to come on you, all the fear that comes on you, it just leaves. And uh, now you're just sitting there and the glow is just coming out of you. And now you're just starting to talk to Lord. And, uh, and if you'll listen closely, they'll start telling you what it is they need to do to be saved and what it is they need to do to be prayed over. And uh, it'll start coming out. So Matthew 21, and I'd like to go to verse 28. I really like this parable. Jesus is given this parable. He's talking to the Pharisees. And he says, what do you think? What think you? In verse 28, there's a certain man. He's got two sons. All right, now we know how a father loves his son. We know how a father wants to give his son's inheritance. And what's one thing that a father likes to do with his kids? Teach him how to be like him. Teach him how to talk like him, walk like them. What do you do when you're a little kid? You put your dad's clothes on. My dad was a police officer. So I'd put my dad's shoes on. I'd put my dad's hat on, you know, and I'd walk around. I wanted to be so much like my dad when I was little. Well, here he is. He's talking to his sons. And he says to the first son, he says, I want you to go today in this sliver of time, this time that you and I are living in. I want you to go today. Please, will you work in my vineyard? Will you work in my vineyard? You know, I mean, our heart is a vineyard, right? We got to be careful what we let in here, right? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. The world is his vineyard, right? I mean, people are his plants. And he'd go on to say this, you know. When we were talking earlier about the, the tares and the harvest and how that's the people and how the devil was the one accusing, how the angels said, root them up, let's do it, root them up. And how the devil goes around with a mirror and just shines it and just shows all the evil in everybody and accuses everybody. 
And the Lord's like, give them Jesus, right? And then now you got the glow of the Lord coming out of you. The devil can accuse you all day. You could just say, talk to the hand, devil, right? And, but he's saying to his son, could you go work in my vineyard today? And what's his son say? He knows what this means. He says, I will not. But afterwards, the Holy Spirit starts working with him. He starts seeing what's going on around him, right? The Bible said, when men slept, the enemy came in and did all these tears and just ruined everything. So who's responsible then for the garden being messy in the way it is? You and I, right? Because we're sleeping, right? We're not on the job. Remember Jesus? He said, could you pray with me for one hour, right? And so his son says no, but afterwards he repents and he, he changes and he goes, okay? Then he comes to the second son and he says the same thing. Son, daughter, for you ladies, daughter, please, will you go work in my vineyard? Will, will you go? I mean, you see that guy that lives down the street that nobody likes, that everybody hates, that, that every, nobody can stand. He's got the rattly car or whatever, whatever he's doing, right? Could you please... Could you just go tell them that I love them, right? I come home from, I'm at the Pentagon. We had snowmageddon. We had those two days. It was, the snow was about this high, right? It took me four hours just to shovel my driveway. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit says, I want you to go shovel the neighbor's driveway. Lord, I don't want to shovel the neighbor's driveway. I just got home. It was been like a 10, 12-hour day, you know, and I just had to shovel this. I don't want to do that. Please, could you just go to the next door neighbor? The guy's not even from this country. You know, he's from Pakistan. You know, you want me to go do this? You know, all right, Lord, I'll go do it. <clears throat> so I go and I start shoveling the guy's driveway. Well, halfway through it, he comes walking outside and he looks at me and he says, what are you doing? I said, sir, <clears throat> I put the shovel by my side like this. I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. And I came home, and the Lord said to come shovel your driveway. So I'm shoveling your driveway. And he just, he just start, tears start coming down his eyes. Now, I didn't know he had been watching the TV evangelists, you know, uh, you know like Billy Graham and all them, those, the old reruns and all that. And he was kind of curious because he had come from Pakistan. So he was curious about, the, about Jesus, right? And uh, he said, you know, he said, I got to go to this doctor's appointment today. It's very vital that I get there. I didn't have anybody to come plow my driveway. I didn't know how I was going to get there or how I was going to get out of that. He said, thank you so much, okay? It opened up a door. It opened up a relationship. Uh, the guy wound up, he, he likes mangoes, and he bought us all kinds of mangoes. You talk about fruit. We got mangoes, it seemed like, every week from him. And uh, my, he liked my wife. And uh, for some reason, he liked her preaching, you know? And uh, she ministered to him, and... Uh, the guy got born again. She led him to the Lord. We took him out to uh, uh, like a Denny's or something like that. We just took him out to a little breakfast place, and he accepted Jesus. I mean, all because the Lord just had an idea. He knew what to do, right? So will you go work in my vineyard? Will you go to my vineyard? Will you go work at it? At the, I'm at uh, Cape Cod, and uh, I'm in the elevator. I just got born again. And the Holy Spirit comes on me. You see that guy standing across from you? Yeah, tell, me, tell him about Jesus. I don't want to tell him about Jesus, Lord. I'm in the elevator. I'm in work. I'm going to a meeting. Tell him about Jesus. Well, I didn't, right? Well, that was my opportunity to tell him. The guy died that weekend. Died of a heart attack, right? And so, man, you talk about standing before the Lord with no excuse, see? And, and so as I started praying to the Lord, and asking him for forgiveness, he said, you know, you were my last chance. You were my last hope to reach this guy. Boy, I tell you what, when you get chastised by the Lord, people think he, he kills your, your cousin, he breaks your leg. No, that's not how the Lord chastises you. I mean, that was a chastisement from the Lord. And I had to stand up there and suck it up and take it, you know, because I had been disobedient to him. And so now I have to you know, explain to the Lord why I didn't listen to him, right? So believe me, when the Lord starts speaking to you, you don't know it's the Lord. You, you know it. My sheep know my voice, right? A stranger's voice, they ain't going to follow, right? So after that, I said, all right, Lord, I don't care where I am. I don't care how weird it seems. I don't care how goofy it seems. I'm gonna, if you tell me to say something, you tell me to lay my hands and heal this guy, I'm going to do it. You tell me to say something, I'm going to say it, okay? It's, it's his decision. And, and I, you know, and the Lord taught me a long time ago, it's their choice, right? So the choice is yours. And so he comes to the, uh, let me get back now to verse 30. <clears throat> he comes to the second son, and he tells him the exact same thing. But what does his son, this son say? 
says, yes, sir, I'll go. He calls him sir, which is another name for Lord. Yes, Lord, I'll go. But he doesn't go. So which of the two kids did his father's will? The first one, right? Thought better of it and went back. Well, then he starts talking about John the Baptist and how he went out. And so how he started sharing the ministry, right? And how harlots, hookers, you know, you name it, thieves, everybody. The people that they wouldn't go out and minister to. They wouldn't go out into the vineyard. They stayed inside, right? Built walls, created a man's type of religion. But they wouldn't go out and just do the simple thing of just telling them about the Lord, right? And he said, look at that. You're seeing these guys get born again. You're seeing these guys come into the kingdom of heaven. He said, they're going to get in before you do. Why? Because John went out and just did what he was supposed to do, and you see all these people reacting and coming to the Lord, right? And so when I read that, I was like, all right, Lord, I get it. I, I'm really getting this. This is my father's will. He's calling me his son. He's calling you his daughter. And he's saying, will you please? I can't do this alone. I mean, that's what the Great Commission is about. Jesus is the head. We are the body. He can't do this alone. He has decided that I'm going to share who I am and I'm going to reveal myself through you, my body. That's how he's going to do this. If we don't reveal the Lord, if we don't go out and work in the vineyard, it's not going to happen. It just will not happen, right? And so what I'd like to do right now, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to share a few things that we're doing here. First, first I want to do this. I'm, I'm just kind of curious. Who here has gone out and evangelized at least one time or has done a food drive or has done something, you know, some kind of ministry? Who's done that? Go ahead and stand. I want to look at this. I mean, look at this. When, when uh, Pastor Justin back in 2018, okay, you can all be seated. When Pastor Justin back in 2018 said that he wanted a 500-person evangelism team, I went into the closet and started praying to the Lord and the Spirit over and over again. Lord, how are we going to do this? But look at this. I mean, look at how many people in this body right now are going out and evangelizing. Look at that. Look at this. I mean, are we a church on the move or what? Amen. Yes, we are. I said, okay, five years, 40 this year, 80. Then, you know, then go up. That's 160. By the time 2023 comes, we're going to have everybody in the church doing some form of evangelism. So the Holy Spirit told me to narrow it down because I tried to get 500 types of evangelism. And Pastor Justin's like, no, no, no. I just want the whole church to get involved. And I was like, Ooh, thank you, Lord. Because I, I was like, how am I going to come up with like all these different ways to go evangelize? So I'm praying to the Holy Spirit, and the Lord says, no, I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them what to do. I'm going to put it on your heart what to do, because each one of you has a sphere of influence. And that's when he told me, each one reach one. You know, you've got something to say. You're born again. If you know John 3, 16, that's all you need to know. That's it, because the Lord will do the rest, right? He says, you've got something to say. You've got a sphere of influence. And um, you got the Lord living on the inside of you. You're a carrier of his presence, right? And he said, if you can just tell him those three things, he says, I'll take care of the rest. So where's Tanya? Is she here? <laughs> oh, yeah, Tanya. Oh, man. So Tanya comes up to me, you know, and she says, man, I got this on my heart. I'm supposed to do this mothers with multiples, you know. So we pray about it. And this thing has grown. She's now their chaplain. They've rewritten the law, their bylaws so that she can minister. People are getting ministered to. We're making winners in life. That's what this church is supposed to do, right? Be a house of prayer, a place of faith, where the glory is, right? And have a sphere of influence. I was like, I was so excited. I was like, yes. And it's growing. It's growing. And uh, whew, I'm just excited to see what's going to go next. Okay. We got some ladies here in the church. I'm going to read these names off because, um, well, ladies and guys. We got, we got Rachel, Shex, Liz, we got Jessica Diaz, we got Jenny Muchai, Janice Smith, you know, Sharwanda. We've got Bay. Is it Bay? Do I say it right? Bay? B? B? We got Jeremiah, Marty Galbraith. You know, I got these ladies and these guys writing letters to the juveniles, right? Okay, how can we do this? I can't go minister to the juveniles, right, because of the COVID right now. So what can we do? Well, he sends me their prayer request every week. Well, the Holy Spirit puts it on my heart. See if the ladies, see if there's people around the church that want to write a letter to them, you know. Just a one-page letter is all we need, right? So they start writing one-page letters and responses to their prayers. Do you know the response that I've been getting from Chaplain Brown 
they are just, they're just overwhelming. He's saying the kids are not only loving it, they're receiving it. They're taking these things home with them. And Rachel just recently, I'm just using one. I'm just pulling one out of a hat, right? Would you please pass along to Rachel that I delivered her message to Jay. As I read the note, uh, I got very excited. So Chaplain Brown is actually taking these notes, and he's actually sitting down with them, and he's reading it to them, and he's helping explain it to them. And he says, I told him Bible studies include, he said he had done Bible studies with David and Goliath. But really, what really moved us is when he recalled that he had read Psalms 91 to him many times. His family would read Psalms 91 to him. Hey, if you're ministering to other people's kids, ooh, the Lord's going to make sure your kids are taken care of. And I mean, how many times has the Lord done that for my kids? I said, Lord, I'm working for other kids. You know, I know you got mine covered. And he said, you know, that really got his attention when you started going over Psalms 91, because that's what his parents would do, right? He asked if he could keep the letter, and the staff said he could take it. I mean, this, this is just one of the examples that's going on. We've got uh, ladies that, uh, is Linda Haney here? Is she here? Or she, she comes on Sunday. She writes letters, you know, to the people in the nursing home. I've got another lady that has requested me if, if people would write letters. You know, the... This is the gospel, folks. This is the kingdom of heaven working by letter, right? Okay. I, I had to share this because I think this is fun. Okay. What do you do <laughs> when you get an update, your Discover card information? You ever heard of people trying to fish and fraud you and try to take your money? Oh, these are excellent opportunities to evangelize, right? <laughs> so, now... You don't, you don't download the links, okay? So never open their links, right? But you, I trace their emails, see where they come from. And so I sent this guy a fake Discover card, right? With, with fake numbers on it and a fake name. And then I put on there, if your days on earth were over and you were to meet the Lord God today, do you know if you would go to heaven or not? And then so I would start telling them about Jesus. And then I said, and in the prayer that I tell him, it said, Lord, cleanse me from unrighteousness. I'll never again be evil trying to steal from people. <laughs> and so I, here's your chance to evangelize, right? Here, here's another one, right? This guy was from Poland. His name was William, right? So he wants me to send him my passport information, and he wants me to send my license. So I take a fake passport with Mr. Bean's picture on it <laughs> and Mr. Bean's name, and I, I put Curious George on the driver's license. Right? With a mask on, you know, and some fake... I don't put my numbers on there. These are fake numbers that I get off online. And then I wrote... The, the, the fun part about this one was, and I did it in Polish, too, because it came from Poland. Now, he might be Polish. He might not... You know, he or she might not. It might be somebody else, you know, just living in there. But, dear William, thank you so much for your honesty and your time clearing up this matter, because he told me that I had a, a bank matter problem, that they were taking money, and you need to clear this up now, so give me your information, Right? Please find attach my license, my passport, and all relevant information. So I'm wanting them to open this up because in there I got the same thing. If you were to die today, do you know if you go to heaven or not? You know, and uh, and so I said your true colors are really showing through. I said I only hope that more people could be honest like you. Let me know if you need any more info. And thanks again. <laughs> and so, so I'm like. I wanted to do something else, but my, my wife starts praying for me. She says, honey, you know, you don't, you know, don't do that. Remember what we did the last time two years ago when the guy wanted me to send him an iTunes card? So I had it all set up with the cops. We were going to try to get this guy, and so I wound up sending him the same thing. But, yeah, there's, there's always opportunities to evangelize. I take advantage of every opportunity I can to evangelize with people, you know. And uh, so the next time you get a... A phishing email, don't open it. You know, don't open the links or anything like that or the attachments. But, hey, feel more than welcome to send them a Jesus loves you message. Because, hey, I, I met a guy one time. Oh, isn't that awesome? I met a guy one time that um, they, someone gave him a track. And he didn't want the thing. And he kept trying to throw it away. And he couldn't throw the track away because it was stuck to his finger. And he couldn't get it off because the guy was so dirty and slimy. He couldn't get it off his finger, right? And so he finally sits down, and he reads it, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit just comes over the guy, and he gets born again. So, I mean, you just, it's just so neat how the Lord works, how he does everything, right? So I wanted to share that with you. I just want you to know that, that we are moving, right? There's a lot of things that we're doing here as a body of believers, right? So, you know, we got our food outreach coming up this Saturday, right, at 8, you know, 7.45 for everybody to show up. And uh, just one person is worth it, isn't it? You know, um, and then we've got David King doing his outreach, right? 
uh, the, the uh, 16th, 17th, and 18th, and he's looking for volunteers on his website. Oh, man, are you kidding me? To be able to go downtown to Fort Worth, right, and, and the opportunity to, to witness and to serve with him while he ministers the message on there, there's so many things that we can do here and so many things that you're entitled to do as a believer. Well, what I'd like to do is uh, go to John chapter 3, and I, I'd just like to share one more thing before we, uh, before we close and John chapter 3 is very revealing. And, and let me tell you something. you got to listen to Wednesday's message that, that Nikki did last week. Oh, my goodness. I mean, dude, man. I mean, I told her already, that's the best I've heard on Romans 5 and 6 in a long time. And, uh, man, that law of the spirit of life will set you free from the law of sin and death. Oh, man. And, uh, but um, John chapter 3, I learned so much from the Lord in this. Um, he, he picks, we pick it up here. Um, I'll just, I'll just paraphrase the first few verses on here. Um, Nicodemus, Pharisee, educated man, educated in the sciences, educated in the law. I mean, educated in the, in the Old Testament. I mean, he knows them inside and out. And uh, he comes to see Jesus by night. And as he's talking to Jesus, he says, dude, we know you're from the Lord. We know you're a teacher from God because none of this stuff could be happening unless you were from the Lord. And so Jesus starts talking about being born again, right? Born from above. Is basically is what he was really saying, you know, when you read that. Being born from above. Well, Nicodemus, being the educated man that he is, he starts freaking out. And when you evangelize a lot, sometimes you just be patient with the Lord while you're talking, all right? Give opportunities for the Lord to settle in on somebody, and then he'll tell you how to respond or just wait for your opportunity to respond, right? So Nicodemus starts freaking out, right? He's like, yeah, how can a guy go back in his mama's belly and be born again? Hello? You know, but Jesus says, marvel not. Now, if, if it was me saying it, I'd say, don't freak out, dude. You know, it's like, chill out. You know, let me explain. Jesus does something here. He starts talking about the wind. It really caught my attention. He starts using something that he can relate to. And if you'll listen to the Holy Spirit, he'll start to give you examples of how to relate to people. And so he starts talking about the wind. Can you see the wind? Can you feel it? Can you touch it? Can you grab it? No, you can't. You can't sense the wind, right, when the wind's blowing. The only way you can tell the wind's even moving, is doing something, is when it starts to move, right? And he said, that's how it is with the Holy Spirit. Nicodemus is still having problems seeing this. But I really liked how Jesus did it, right? Because the Holy, this is, that's how the Holy Spirit moves. You can't touch him. You can't grab him. Your physical senses can't even see him, right? But man, the second he starts moving, ooh boy, you'll start knowing it, won't you? That's what happens in the kingdom of heaven, right? The electromagnetic spectrum, right? You can't see a TV wave, can you? Well, then how does a TV work, right? Well, there's things that your physical body is designed to do, and there's things your physical, physical body can't see, right? So I start telling kids about TV waves and, and about, you know, the electromagnetic spectrum and how you really can sense all you can see is just visible light, right? But now some animals, they can see infrared. Others can't, you know? And so you start telling them that. And then one of the things I like to do is, because a lot of times people have trouble with the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I was so happy when she was singing that song tonight. I was like, yes, because this was part of the examples I was going to use. So, Lord, how can I explain? I thought it was one God. How can I explain the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit if it's one God? Well, H2O. Okay, I'm going to show you chemically. I'm going to show you something in a chemical process, and then I'm going to show it to you in a physical process. So I'm going to use something in science that we know that is true, to, to show you how three things can be one. If I have two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule, what do I got? I got water, right? Those three things together make water. Now, if I take away one of those molecules of hydrogen, what happens? You don't got water, right? You take away the Holy Spirit or you take away Jesus or you take away God, you don't have God, right? And then I tell them how, what God means in, in the Hebrew. It's Elohim. It's a plural word. It's plural. What do you mean plural? It means it means more than one. They operate as one, and there's a structure to it, right? Well, show it to me in the physical then. Okay, if I take water and I heat it up, what does it turn into? Steam, a liquid, right? A gas. If I leave it at room temperature, what is it? It's a liquid, right? What if I get it below freezing? It's ice, right? So I've just shown you how something in this earth can have three forms but still be water. Then I've showed you how you can take three things chemically and make it one, right? Look at the U.S. government. You got the legislative, judicial, and the executive branch, right? They make the U.S. 
government. You take one out, you don't have the U.S. government. They function as one. So that's how they function, right? Man, when you tell a kid that, all of a sudden, they're like, wow, yeah, fire. It takes oxygen, it takes heat, and it takes something to burn. But if you take something away from that, you don't got fire anymore. So the Holy Spirit began to share with me how you can simplify the Word of God and make it really simple, right? And so that's one of the things I want everybody here to understand and get. Jesus begins to talk to Nicodemus, and he begins to use examples that he can understand, right? He can relate with, even though he's still having trouble with it. But Jesus, he goes on to say this in verse 16. He says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have Zoe life, right? The bubbling kind of life. If you know that script, who, who here knows that scripture? You got it. You have got the key to salvation. All you got to do is say that scripture to somebody and the Lord will do the rest. I mean, you'll be surprised how the scriptures will open to you, right? Now he says this. He goes, now remember, God didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. And that's why I like Nikki's message last week so much is get rid of that sin conscious, get rid of that slave mentality, make the choice and choose to live in life and in light. That's why I like John chapter 8 so much. I read that thing. He says, I can teach you how to live in light. So I want to give an example, right? Well, how, how can you do it, right? Well, Jeremiah, I'd like to give you a $20 bill. How would you like to have that? So it's a little Monopoly money, right? Okay, let me, let me give you this one. Now, now, let me ask you something. What's the real deal? How do you know? He's used it before. He's, he's recognized it. He's used it before, right? And so I started picking up on that. Jesus didn't come to condemn you. He came to set you free. So what he's doing now is, what he wants you to know is teach him righteousness. Teach him light. You don't have to experience sin to know what life is. Jesus can teach you what light is. And when the devil comes with you with the counterfeit and the fake, you'll know what the real deal is. Oh, man. So I learned something from that. Jesus didn't come to condemn. He came to set the world free. He came to use the word of God to teach them what life is, to teach them what light is. That's what he said in John chapter 8. I'm the light of the world. Hey, they just got ready to stone that girl. Now she's not stoned. And he, and he said, I'm going to teach you life. I'm going to teach you light. And you'll never have to be a slave to sin. Oh, it's just so powerful. So he goes and he continues and he says, he that believes in him will not be condemned. But he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. It gets really good as you start digging into these next three verses. This is how condemnation works. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness more than they love light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. There's the problem. They've fallen. They're in a fallen state. They're like Adam. They fell. Okay, so they're naked. So they try to cover their nakedness. And they're covering their nakedness with what? With darkness, right? So they get into that pattern. They get into that system, right? So they learn how to develop their mind, how to live in darkness, right? And not how to live in light. Something wrong, right? We got to fix it, right? So he says, everyone that does evil, they're not going to come to the light. Why? Because their deeds are going to be reproved. But if they do come to the light, their deeds will be made manifest that they can be right in God. And that, that really helped me understand so much now what were we singing earlier when we were praising and worship? You know how big our God is? My God can do this. My God's so big. Okay, uh, we had, I had to go pick up chairs for our biker event and then pick up the chairs for the church anniversary. So here I am driving. I pull into the rental place. You know, the guy's not in a happy mood because he's busy, you know. He's kind of snippy. And sn now I got a choice. I can snip back. Right? Or I can just stay in love. I, I just stay in love and then I just come up to him and apologize later and say, hey, look, I'm just trying to help. You know, I, I kind of moved the vehicle where he didn't want it and, and all of this, right? I come back the second time and the guy says, hey, he says, you from a church? Because of the way I'm acting. God bless you. God loves you. Yeah. Guy starts breaking down right in front of me. Start telling me how he's been attacked with this sickness, you know. And he says, you know, he says, I believe. The Lord, he says, I believe the Lord can do this if he'll heal me. I lay my hands on him and pray on him right then and there. Be healed in Jesus' name. Goes back and gets his test done. Well, he doesn't have cancer, right? But they found some kind of spot in his, uh, I think it's his bladder or something like that. 
So I want you to come in agreement with me right now. This is what I did for the, the guy that was a Satan worshiper, right? And uh, he got born again, right? I had everybody pray. So we're going to pray for this guy right now in the name of Jesus. Just come in agreement with me right now. Father, I thank you for this man. I won't say his name, but we thank you right now, not only that he gets fully born again, Father, but that he becomes completely healed in the name of Jesus and that he becomes a walking, living testimony for you. And we receive that. And if it's from me, hey, that's great. But if it's from someone else, send them, Lord. But we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. See, isn't this awesome? Wife and I go for a walk uh, last night. As we're coming back, three little kids trying to cross the street. One of them about five years old, maybe six, riding his bike. We go walking by. The Holy Spirit says, uh-uh, you're not going anywhere. Stop. Little kids trying to cross the street. These cars are coming up around that hill really fast. I had to run out and go like this to stop the cars because he would have been hit. I mean, these are the things that the Holy Spirit starts doing. Now, I believe we're going to get the opportunity to witness to these kids, Okay. So there's a, an older brother and then two other brothers. So, Father, I just thank you in the name of Jesus. You've opened the door. You had to save their life, one of the kids' life for once. Now I'm thanking you for an opportunity to share the gospel with them. Set it up, Lord, and I'll do it in Jesus' name. See what I'm doing? I'm being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and then I'm asking them for opportunities to share and witness the word with them, right? Um, all right, Holy Spirit, where do we want to go next? Father, I just thank you in the name of Jesus. I just thank you for everyone here, Father. I just thank you for this body of wonderful believers here that are willing to take your word and to listen, that are willing to go into the streets, Father, that are willing just to talk to somebody. Oh, Father, I just thank you for it in Jesus' name. I thank you because you said in John 16, when you send the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world. And that's what he's doing right now. He's wooing and cooing hearts. People have questions, Father, in the name of Jesus. They're asking, Lord. They want to know, Lord, is there really a God? Is this for real or not? And you're ready to go, Lord. You're standing right there because you said you'd teach the world righteousness. Ooh, I like that when you said that, Lord. You'd convict them of sin and teach them of righteousness. And, uh, Lord, I just thank you for it, Father. And I thank you for this wonderful body of believers receiving this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Who? Who here would like to, um, how do I say this, Holy Spirit? Who here is intimidated when they go evangelize? Who gets intimidated? Yeah, okay. Go, go ahead and stand. Just go ahead and stand up. Seriously, just stand up. See, one of the things about evangelizing is you, you have to, I, the Holy Spirit told me like this, you step into the light. And so when I would go out and I would evangelize, when I started getting intimidated, I'd ask, okay, Lord, where do you want me to stand? And so I would step into the light. Sometimes it'd be right in their face, you know, especially when you got three or four guys on you and they're like, Arr, you know. And, um, but I just thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that there is a Holy Ghost boldness that comes over you in the name of Jesus, okay? There's a joy. There's just a release in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just a release. And as you begin to speak, just as you begin to speak, right? Lord, just take over in Jesus' name. Just take over. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. So thank you, Lord. Well, did, did, did you all get something out of this tonight? I mean, I did. And it's like, so thank you, Lord. Thank you again for being such good servants of the Lord. Thank you for, th this is a church on the move. And I'll, I'll, tell me your testimonies. I want to hear them because I share them with Pastor Justin. And uh, so, Brother Eric, could you please come up and uh, do the offering? So thank you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Joseph. I just want to say thank you to, uh, there's a lot of people that work behind the scenes and you see people on the cameras every week and people in the sound booth every week and there's people in the back room that, uh, you know, do this live stream and broadcast. There's people that, you know, are out in the lobby that greet. There's people in this back room that uh, minister to the ministers. There's people that are out in the youth building. So I just want to say thank you for all those that are serving. And if you're not serving... We want you to get involved. Uh, if you don't know how to get involved, you can see my wife, Nikki Deaton, and uh, she can help you get on that path. 
Um, as we receive our tithes and offerings, Psalm 126 says, they may weep as they go out carrying their seed to sow. The message translation says, in despair. And it says, but they will return with joyful laughter and shouting with gladness as they bring back armloads of blessing and a harvest overflowing. During this time when this uh, COVID hit, our business was shut down and back in March, and we sowed seeds uh, to several different places to stick it in the devil's face to say, God, we believe your word, the law of seed time and harvest, that this seed is going to produce a harvest in our life. And that's what this scripture is saying. And, it, you know, God has seen what has happened to his people during this time. He, he's not surprised by this. He has a plan. And uh, it says they will return with joyful laughter and shouting with gladness as they bring back armloads of blessing and a harvest overflowing. I want to encourage you tonight to not quit, to not give up on the seeds that you have sown. And if you have stopped sowing, start again and believe God. And, uh, you know, people that uh, have not sown, they say, well, I can't afford to right now. Listen, believe God, you'll not miss that money. God's going to make up for it somewhere else. And you'll see that the blessing will start working in your life. Amen. So, Father, we pray over our seeds tonight. Lord, the seed that you'd have us sow. And, Lord, we just believe your word that we will return with joyful laughter. We will shout with gladness. There will be suddenlies that happen in our life. And armloads of blessing and a harvest overflowing because that's what your word says. That it's good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over, and we thank you for your word tonight, and that you're faithful to your word in Jesus' name, and we all said, amen. amen. All right, as they're about to pass the baskets, my wife's going to come make a few announcements. Have you heard anybody that's so excitable about announcements? <laughs> I haven't. Okay, a few announcements. You heard earlier, we've got a powerful um, three weeks, back to back to back, coming up. Um, this Sunday, you know, Pastor will be back off of this vacation where they've been seeking God, so it's going to be good word. I'm believing for just powerful word. In the day of his power, how can it not be powerful, right? So come expecting at 9 o'clock, Dr. Savell will be in the 11th. Then on the 18th, it'll be Mrs. Savell in the 9th, Dr. Savell in the 11th. And then on the 25th, Pastor Carla will have both services. So mark your calendars like Eric said earlier. Bring people because, you know, God's going to move. There's going to be some divine interventions going on. So bring people in and don't miss yourself. Um, the, this, this weekend is super busy on our grounds. We've got the mobile food outreach this Saturday that Joseph was talking about at 745 volunteers. You can still come. You can register online to come so you, Joseph knows you're coming. Um, I know it's earlier than last time, but go to bed earlier. And then you won't have any problem waking up and getting here, right? Because these are people that are hurting. And part of our responsibility is to love hurting people. So if you can be here at all on Saturday, please come. It will be a glorious time, I'm sure. And then Victorious Adults meets this Saturday in the lobby. If you're 55 or older, come, enjoy word and fellowship and food. It'll be a good time. And Don't, um, don't be ashamed of that. Right? <laughs> 55 plus? Yeah. Yeah. It's glorious. Glorious. Victorious. Uh, victorious. That's right. Um, also, with... What Joseph was saying, we have so many opportunities coming up to help, to serve, to outreach, and things like that. With the holidays coming up, we already have the Crowley House of Hope has already delivered the bags for the Thanksgiving meals. There's a list inside the bag of everything that you can buy at the grocery store to fill this bag. And only what's on the list is what you put in the bag. And then these, so we have 30 of these bags available. So only 30 of you get to do this. The first 30. First come, first serve, right? So these bags are going to be available in the lobby. Um, and there's also a sign-up sheet next to the bags. Please put your name on it so we know who to expect the bags back from. And um, these are due back on November 7th. So you have time. But if you want to go ahead and get it done, Joseph would be very thankful that you get it done. And we can get it back to them in due time for Thanksgiving. What a glorious thing that we get to do. We get to help our community. And this is one of those ways. So we have other things coming up with Thanksgiving. You're going to see them on, if you go to heritageoffaith.com, for 
forward slash events. You're going to see other outreaches, um, other ways you can give to people in our own family. Of course, Christmas will be coming with the angel tree. That will be set up sometime in November. So there's all kinds of ways you can get involved in helping this season. Um, with that said, the ladies' Christmas brunch is coming up. And this Sunday, yeah, ladies. Woo, woo. Just kidding. Um, so that's going to be available online, and there will be ladies in the foyer um, to give you information about the ladies' brunch. And ladies, if you want to host a table, there's a theme this year called Country Christmas. And so we decorate according to that. Of course, you can decorate however you want, but if you want to be judged to win, it'll be Country Christmas. And so, but you can just be a blessing. And that's another way to be a blessing to other ladies that come in. Some of them will come in not knowing many people, and so you get to be a host at a table that introduces them to the other people at the table, and it just becomes a real fun thing. It's a nice thing that we do and we get to do. And of course, the special speaker this year is Kathy Duplantis. So it's going to be a powerful, powerful morning and a great breakfast. So you won't want to miss it. And that's, um, I think, December 5th. It's Saturday, December 5th. So sign up early for that so we know to make, um, you know, so we can get everything prepared for that as well. And then young adults, this Sunday evening, October 11th at 6 p.m., you'll be meeting here in the, in the church. So if you need any more details about that, see Pastor Rick or Pastor Cassie who are over in the youth building tonight. So you can see them before you leave if you want. If you're not on the group me chat, you can see them to get on the group me chat so that you can get all the upcoming details on all of that stuff. And then, of course, the gospel festival, not this weekend, but the following weekend. And, um, you know, our own heritage worship team will be ministering Sunday night. But every night will be... Um, praise and worship, anointed praise and worship, downtown. This is just amazing. I know most of you heard about this at the anniversary, but it's going to be an amazing time. So if you make plans to attend that, October 16th through 8th, the 18th at 7 p.m. every night. And, of course, Heritage Worship is on Sunday night. And if you, have, if you would like to volunteer at that, then go to gospelfestival.tv. And you can volunteer right on their website. And it's stuff like, you know, greeting and helping people find a seat or, or bringing people from the parking lot. It's easy stuff. So ways to just be friendly and kind and introduce them to the love of Jesus. Amen? Amen. I think that's it. So let's pray before we go. Father, we just thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your word that was ministered. Father, we want to be those who say, yes, Lord, send us. Send us out into your vineyard. And Father, I thank you for the message that came across tonight that just made it simple. Father, any one of us can just share what we know, can just share who we know. And Father, I just do, I pray over each one of us that we would have the boldness every day to share. Father, I also pray that we slow down enough to see people. Holy Spirit, quicken us that we not too quickly walk out or walk in or walk away, but we'd, we'd hear you and we'd obey your voice. Father, there's so many hurting people right now. And so I just pray, Lord, that this, you've put us here at such a time as this. So, Father, I thank you and I praise you for the upcoming harvest tomorrow, <laughs> tonight, tomorrow, and the next day. Father, I just thank you for your anointing on each one as we leave. I thank you that life flows in them, over them, and around them. I thank you for healthy bodies and healthy minds. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Give them Jesus.